Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is Computer Science Discoveries Unit 3, Lesson 17, a mini project, Interactive Card. Interesting. So, so far we have learned how to uh, make our sprites move. We've learned how to make backgrounds. We've learned how to use the counter pattern. We've learned how to use conditionals, those if-then statements. We've learned how to do keyboard inputs and mouse inputs. Now we're going to put all of our newly found skills together to make an interactive card for this little mini project. All right, so we're going to, in the standards here, create clearly named variables that represent different data types and perform operations on their values. We're going to design and iteratively develop programs that combine control structures, including nested loops and compound conditionals. We're going to decompose problems and subproblems into parts to facil facilitate the design, implementation, and review of programs. We're going to seek and incorporate feedback from team members and users to refine a solution that meets users' needs. We're going to incorporate existing code, media, and libraries into original programs and give attribution. We're going to systematically test and refine programs using a range of test cases. We're going to distribute tasks and maintain a project timeline when collaboratively developing computational artifacts. We're going to document programs in order to make them easier to follow, test, and debug. <gasps> yeah, okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of standards being covered in one little project here. Goodness gracious. Uh, yeah, getting my breath back. All right. Essential question, what skills and practices are important when creating an interactive program? Well, a lot of that's up here in the standards, right? So the skills that we need are being able to program, A, using JavaScript. Uh, we need to be able to uh, understand and analyze and debug the code that we're putting together. We need to be able to uh, make loops. We need to use the draw loop, we need to be able to create variables, we need to be able to uh, use conditionals, counter patterns, if then statements, if then else statements. Goodness gracious, there's a lot. Okay, this entire lesson is on code.org, so make sure you're signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming in the lesson on code.org. Watching the video is mandatory. Watch the video that you're already watching as you work your way through the lesson and you know i'm going to be doing my own thing i don't want you to copy what i'm doing i want you to do your own interactive card using your imagination and your creativity i'm just modeling what i want uh, no need to submit anything on this assignment page all work for this assignment will be completed on code.org the rubric for this assignment, this is the big important stuff right here. So make sure you are going back to this and making sure that you are basically putting a check mark beside each of these items here so that you can get a good grade. All right, your interactive card project must have at minimum a background. Yeah, you need one. Your background can be a sprite background or a background using colors, ellipses, and or rectangles, or, uh, oh, yeah. So again, it can be a sprite background or a background using colors, ellipses, or rectangles. So you can use those drawing blocks or you can use a sprite background. All right, uh, descriptive comment blocks helping to describe and organize your code. That's important. You're gonna be writing some code today. So make sure you're using descriptive comment blocks to describe and help organize it a little better. All right. You need at least two animated sprites, meaning two of the sprites that you put in there are, you know, moving. Uh, at least one text explaining how to interact with your card, because if you don't explain how to interact with it, how is your user supposed to figure it out? Are they supposed to guess? Because you're either gonna have keyboard inputs or mouse inputs. So you're gonna have to explain to your user, like, move the mouse to make this happen, or hit the space bar to make this happen, or use the arrow keys and see a surprise or something. Use of the counter pattern to make your sprites move. You can reference previous lesson videos for help on that. You need to uh, make use of conditionals. Remember, conditionals are those if-then statements, if-then else statements, right? And then finally, some kind of user interaction with the animations using the keyboard or the mouse. 
or both if you're uh if you uh just want to go above and beyond like that all right let's head over to code.org we're already on bubble one here um now you do have access to a project guide if you want to use the project guide, by all means, use the project guide. It works as kind of like an outline as if you were writing an essay. So if you want to plan out your interactive card in some way before you just kind of organically jump in and start making stuff, um, you can do that. That's, you know, but I also respect the creative process and literally everybody who does anything creative ever has a different creative process. And I'm not going to nail you down and make you do a specific creative process because, well, a specific creative process doesn't work for every person. So again, if you want to use the project guide, by all means, use it and uh, benefit from it. If you don't want to use the project guide, you don't have to. I'm, that's not part of what I'm grading. I'm grading your ability to uh, program and make a program work, not your ability to fill out a worksheet. That's just not what I do. That's not the way I am, man. All right. So whew, let's continue. Bubble two. All right, we've got an example project to look at. It says, run the program a few times and answer the following questions. Okay, so let's first run it. It says, happy birthday! Yay, birthdays are fun. Okay, and then it says, move the mouse to shake your present and keep shaking to see your surprise. Okay, so we're moving the mouse around and the... Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to... Let's run that again. How does that work? Okay. All right. So, uh, I guess in the in the one gift box there was a bicycle and a really hyperactive puppy. Well, all right. My cats will probably not enjoy the puppy, and my cats probably won't enjoy the bicycle. But I would enjoy the bicycle, and I would enjoy the puppy. So, um. Too bad, cats. You've got a new friend, and I'm going to go riding a bike without you. All right. So um, so we know what it does now. Which elements appear to use drawing commands? Um, well, what's drawn on the screen using drawing blocks or uh, would be the background here, this like sky blue-ish color background. And then uh, this line, and this line for this balloon, and this balloon, and then the ellipsy, ellipsy, and red, red, right? So that's the drawing stuff. And then which elements appear to be sprites? Oh, well, um, this is a sprite, right? This present here. And then the bicycle is a sprite, and the hyperactive puppy, that's also a sprite. All right. For each sprite, which properties are being updated? Okay, so, well, this would be sprite.rotation property being updated. This would be, like, sprite.x and sprite.y randomized, right, using a random number block. So we've got the sprite.rotation counter pattern here and a, a sprite.x and a sprite.y um, parameter where the located random number block update constant in the draw loop thing happening there. And then also on the present, we've got a random number rotation working there. Where do you see conditionals being used? Well, the conditional is being used on the present sprite. And I imagine that conditional probably says something like, if mouse move, then the present shakes. And there's probably some kind of variable set up so that once it shakes a certain amount, it's going to disappear, and then these two sprites appear. Um, and are there elements that you don't understand? Uh, I'm not sure exactly how they set this present up, but I know that they would have to do it with a variable 
setting up a variable outside the draw loop and then putting that variable inside an if statement or conditional inside the draw loop. That's how they got that to work, but I'm not exactly sure how they set it up. So let's finish. On to the next one. Okay, cool. So we've got some examples we can take a look at. And I, I love it when they provide examples. It gives me ideas. All right. In the next few levels, you'll be completing your own interactive card. Here are some examples to give you some ideas. Don't forget to look at the code to see how they work. All right, so I'm going to right click on these. If you're using your Chromebook, a right click is a two finger tap on your touchpad. All right, um, open link in new tab, open link in new tab, open link in new tab on each of those. I want to, whoa, whoa, 61 lines of code for that one, 48 lines of code for that one. 62 lines of code for that one. So obviously we're going to be writing a fair amount of code here. So that's why these comment blocks are important. These gray comment blocks where it says like create the vase sprite, create a flower sprite, draw the ground, draw the background. If key is pressed, do this. Goodness gracious. All right. So let's take a look at each of these and figure, let's look at the code and see how they work because we can get some ideas and uh, potentially borrow some uh, of these programming ideas here. So run, thanks a bunch. Pick all the flowers by clicking on them. Click, click. So if I click off of it, nothing happens. So that's interesting, click. So each of those have to be sprites. Oh, so once I pick them, then they're in a vase. That's a kind of, a, cute way to interact. That's a neat interactive card. Uh, so let's look at how that works. So up here, they created the flower sprites, flower one, flower two, flower three. And probably in an animation tab, they'd have flower one, flower two, flower three, right? And then they have a vase sprite here, create the vase sprite and make that invisible. Okay. So they made it invisible by using the visible block. So you'd go into your sprites drawer, most likely, and use the visible block and say vase.visible equals false. And that means that while the vase is here, uh, as far as the computer is concerned, it is not visible. And then create a counter to keep track of the number of flowers cut. So here's a flower underscore count equals zero. OK. And then we're drawing the background, light blue, draw the ground, fill brown, no stroke. Remember an insert rectangle going on from, you see it, you see it. All right. If the key is pressed, hide the flower and move it to its vase position. If key is pressed, hide the flower and move it to its vase position. If key is pressed, we're using mouse clicks. Use is wrong, man. Okay. Uh, mouse pressed over flower one. Okay. I right. Flower count equals flower count plus one. So that's influencing this variable up here. So now the flower count is one instead of zero. And flower one visibility becomes false. Okay. Okay, flower dot rotation. Not sure why. Oh, because that. Oh, okay, so it's it's now invisible, but now it's up here, right? Its x value and y value are now up here somewhere, and it rotated slightly to the left. And then mouse press over flower two. If I click this one, its visibility becomes false. Um, And the flower count up here becomes two because we've added another one to the flower count. Builds visibility became false, it disappeared, and then its X and Y position changed. So it's up here somewhere. And then mouse pressed over flower three. The flower count goes to plus one again. So now it's three. And yeah, we've gone over that. That's rotation. So that one, this is flower three, slightly going that way. 
And then if flower count is greater than or equal to three, then flower one's visibility is true, flower two's visibility is true, flower three's visibility is true, and the vase visibility is now true. Remember that the vase visibility was made false up here when the sprite was created. And then down here, we've got draw sprites, and then all of the text being drawn on the screen. So reset run, click, 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 boom, it works. Very cool. Okay, let's look at the happy birthday. We already went over this one. I'm just curious what they did with the counter pattern and the variable to make the present disappear. So here we have setting up the variables up here outside the draw loop, setting up our sprites. And then here's the variable that they created to influence the visibility of the uh, present. So shake count equals zero. Here's where they drew all of their stuff up there, making the background and the balloons fill yellow. What got filled yellow? Hold on. Bike is yellow, but that's not something you'd fill. I don't think that code needs to even be there. That line 20, that's weird. Anyway, uh, shake the present when the mouse moves. Okay, so here's the mouse did move if statement, the conditional. So if the mouse moves, then the present's rotation equals random number. That's what's making the present shake back and forth. And shake count equals shake count plus one. Okay. And then if shake count is greater than 100, then the presence visibility becomes false. The surprise one visibility is true, and the surprise two visibility is true. And then it plays a cheering sound, does it? It doesn't play a sound. OK. Um, and then down here, make the surprises do cool stuff. Uh, so this is where the surprises are spinning around. So that's so line 37 there, that's what's making the bike spin. And then, yeah, here's, like I was saying earlier, the x and y parameters with random numbers getting influenced and you see how that works. So they did a uh, plus math operator and threw a random number block into the second position on the math operator. And then draw sprites and then more uh, draw blocks, but these are all putting the text up here. So here's a happy birthday. And then down here, moving the mouse, move the mouse, make uh, to shake presents and keep shaking to see the surprise. There's the instructions. Cool. That's how that one works. And then awesome life. Hi, welcome to my awesome life. Press space to play my guitar. Press arrows to ride my bike. Whoa, that was loud. Okay, and so up and down do nothing, but right and left move the bike back and forth, and... Oh, that's a little bit annoying. Okay, so we know how that works, and then every time I hit spacebar, notes also come out of the guitar on top of it doing the guitar sound, and then my bike makes a chimey sound anytime I hit the left key. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of setting up the background, creating the bike, creating the alien, and the guitar, and making those notes. And then in the draw loop, we've got the background be white. Okay, I don't think so. Because we've got to, why even do that? Because right here you've got the background as a sprite. So 
I don't know. They do some questionable things in here sometimes. All right. Play the notes and reset the note sprites when the space bar goes down. Okay. So key went down space. Note one. X equals 130. Note Y equals 330. Right. And then play sound the guitar. Stop sound and play sound guitar chord. Oh, okay. So if you hit it while the guitar sound, the previous guitar sound is playing, it'll stop the previous one and play the new one. I understand how that works. All right. And then move the bike and play the bell. If key went down left, stop sound, play sound. If else if key down left, bike dot x equals dot bike dot x minus five. So in the same... In the same um, conditional here, they're making the bike move, and it's like a double conditional. Interesting. Okay. Uh, if key down right stops sound, bike dot x gets bike dot x plus five. So that's what's making the bike move back to the, towards the right. And then move and wiggle the notes. Cool. So every time, so it resets the location of the notes back to these original locations every time you hit the space bar. And as long as you just let them go, there it's running this code down here to make them travel. Cool. Okay, we get it. And then this is what's making the text appear and, of course, the draw sprites block. All right, so let's um, reset that, reset that, and reset that so my computer's not going crazy trying to play all those animations. And we're on bubble four, laying out your background. Before beginning this project, let's see how much time we've already gone into this. 22 minutes and we haven't even started the project. Sorry guys. All right. Um, laying out your background. Before beginning this project, you should have already completed the interactive card planning activity. Blah, blah, blah. You didn't have to. If you want to, go for it. Not uh, part of your grade. You'll want to have that paper. One second. All right. Sorry about that. I was getting a phone call. So, um, Preparation is a, is a very important element of successfully creating a program for sure. Um, but, you know, have ideas in your head. Be creative. That's really the important part. Refer to your planning activity sheet. We'll ignore that. First, figure out what the lowest layer in your image is. This should be the background block and add it to the very top of the draw loop. Uh, okay, well, I... I'm probably going to use a background sprite for mine. And let's see. Looks like they did they add some stuff? Am I am I crazy or did they add some stuff? It looks like they added stuff since last time I looked at this. Hmm. Cool. There's caves. Like background lands and stuff, uh, snowy stuff. This is cool. Um, I really like this one. Yeah, let's just be quick. <laughs> wow, that looks that looks wild. All right, um, I'm just going to call this planet. Make it simple. Doesn't need to be complicated. And then I need to set this up. So variable sprite. Planet and sprite dot set animation planet planet and then I need to world draw sprites run voila okay uh, that's the lowest layer in my image and it's at the very top of my draw loop see see. Uh, next, layer each additional drawing block in the order that you want them to appear in the stack. 
Finally, add a comment to the top of this section of code to describe what it does. Um, okay. Uh, comment blocks. There we go. I think there are comment blocks in every single drawer. Make the background or make the planet background sprite, and then we'll throw another one out here. Boom. And challenge can you use variables or random number to add some subtle animation to your background layer? Um, probably. Let's see. Um, we'll throw in a couple of blinky stars or something um, with random number drawing ellipses duke. and it'll have to be on top of the sprites. We'll do I don't want to do too many of them. We'll just do five little blinkies back there. And how did I do this before? Let's see. These are look, these are size, so I just want them to be really small. Oops. Control Z. And I want them to be at random x and random y. Let's see if I reset run. See, they're all right there. Um, and then I want to do no stroke and color, color fill. We'll make them white. I actually want them to be even smaller. Let's do like two. what that looks like okay well I that doesn't really look any smaller to me but okay and then we're gonna do random number and we're gonna put them to make them appear up well let's make them appear either here I don't want this many I just want three of them uh, I'm gonna put random between 220x and 330x. So random number. Two twenty, three thirty, uh, and then a random number, random number. I guess I only need to do this once and then I can copy and paste it. 220, 230, and then random number for Y. Um, let's see. For Y, we'll do 66 to 220. Reset run. Whoa, okay, all right, and then let's lasso it, control C, and then control V, control V, control V, reset, run. <laughs> all right, I like that. All right, so we did that challenge part, finish, continue. All right, bubble five, now adding sprites, now that you have the more static elements of your card laid out, it's time to add the sprites. Your sprites should provide the primary animations and interactions for your card, so feel free to get creative here and have fun. Do this. Check out the sprites table on the back of your planning sheet. Yeah, we didn't do a planning sheet, so we're moving on. Initialize the sprite at the top of your program with the create sprites. Okay. So 
animation, add a new sprite. I'm going to upload an image because I want to use my uh, Decker astronaut from before. Open. And we're just going to call him Astro. Make it simple. Back to the code. So let's put him in here. Sprites. Create sprite. This is Astro. And set the animation. Astro to Astro. And I'm huge, so I need to use scale. Astro. And to make it smaller, I'm going to make it 0 0.2. See what that makes him. Yeah, that's a good size. And then I want him to be down here. So that's x74, y330. So right here, x74, y330. Reset, run. There I am. Okay. I'm in the right spot. And let's see. What else do I want to do? All right, we're going to use another comment block. And here's the uh, Decker astronaut uh, sprite. And... Need another sprite. Let's see. Alien. I am so redundant with this. I just like to put me on a planet, exploring a planet, looking for aliens. Um, alien. That guy's an alien. Uh, let's see. Draw your own. No, we're just going to find it. Animals. Is that an animal? Uh, emojis. Food fantasy. Here we go. We're in the right spot. Uh, who would stand? <laughs> I like this one. Um, yeah, they added a lot of new stuff to this. Look at all this. This is great. Um, I love I love some of these. Let's see. Who would live on a purple planet? He's got like ice cream and sunglasses on. Um, purple planet. There's a bird. I've used him before, so I want to use a different alien. Alien that's kind of scary. Um, he's like scary but happy. This guy's gr grumpy. Like, oh, now what? Um, let's see. This guy looks like he's just eating dinner, and he's like, yeah, burp. Um, this guy has some I'm going to eat you qualities, and he'll stand out on a purple planet because he's green, so we'll just call him alien. You really don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're naming your sprites. All right, so let's make a comment block up here. Alien sprite. And again, like with your comment blocks, you don't have to, you're, we're not trying to be Shakespeare with our comment blocks. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, sprite drawer, we're there. Variable, let's set it up. Alien. One second, getting a phone call. <laughs> 